If you are new to note-taking and personal knowledge management, PKM, it can be really daunting. There are a lot of different options for note-taking tools, and they can seem really intimidating. They can be super powerful, and you might not know where to jump in and start. But one of the best things about these systems is that they can be as complex or as simple as you want. And sometimes simple is more powerful. If you are just getting started with note-taking, I wanted to create a non-intimidating entry point to help you get up and running in your system, regardless of what application you're using. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Dan, and by trade, I am a cloud cost infrastructure billing specialist. But recently I started uploading videos to YouTube, which is what you're seeing right now. I've had a blog for several years, and I'm just sharing what I've learned over the years. My tool of choice is Obsidian. You can use Obsidian, you could use a different tool, these things that I'm going to talk about in this video are going to sort of apply across the board, whatever tool you're using. This is a follow-up to a previous video that I created with 10 Obsidian tips to level up your note-taking productivity. This is more geared towards beginners, but I think that the things that I talk about will apply to both beginners and advanced interchangeably. So I encourage you to watch this video and see if there's anything that you can pick and choose to apply to your own system. Either way, these are things that I wish that I knew when I first started taking notes in any sort of serious system like Obsidian or anything else. If you like this channel, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, all of those sorts of things, and let's just jump into the tips. At its core, there are two things you do in a note system. Take notes and recall notes. Any work that you do is in service of one of these two things. It's easy to get distracted by the fancy functionality of tools like Obsidian or anything else, but just keep in mind as you're playing around, as you're organizing your system, whether what you are doing is helping you take notes better or helping you recall notes better. So building up systems and templates and all these sorts of automations are all in service of helping you take notes faster. You can click a button and take a meeting note, for example, or you can click a button and take notes on a certain thing, or maybe you're doing organization to help recall. So you're adding tags, you're adding organization. Everything you're doing in your system to improve your system is either working towards helping you take notes or helping you recall notes. So keep in the back of your mind which one you are doing and how much it's going to help you. Because you might not want to spend hours upon hours working on a system that's really not going to save you that much time when it comes to taking notes, or it's really not going to do you that much of a service when you're trying to recall something. So keep that in mind as you are working on your system to help you determine whether that is the correct use of your time. The notes that you take will either be someone else's ideas or your own ideas. Prioritize your own. Let's say you're reading a book and you're taking notes on that book. There are two things that you can write down. Either you write down something that is in the book, so an idea from the author, or you write down an idea that you had while reading the book. So you're reading the book and you think of something yourself and then you write that down. So either what you're doing is you're taking notes on somebody else's ideas or your own ideas. I think when people are taking notes, they often prioritize other people's ideas. So you're just taking notes on what you're reading but I would encourage you to really prioritize your own ideas. So when you are taking notes on something, if it inspires you to think of something new, write that down. Because I think a lot of people skip that. This is a lot to do with the Zettelkasten priority system uh, or Zettelkasten note-taking system or the book, How to Take Smart Notes. It goes over a lot of this, but for me, that was a key idea that I took from that system that I encourage other people to do as well. Because when you write down your own ideas, you have so much more flexibility to build on top of that and connect it to the other things. And eventually you'll have a note-taking system that is very much unique to you and full of what you are thinking in your thoughts rather than somebody else's. So you can take notes on other people's ideas, but make sure you're also writing down your own ideas. And I would say just prioritize yours more than you think that you are right now. Don't take notes on everything but definitely be liberal with note-taking in the beginning and see what ends up sticking. When you're getting started in a note-taking system, you might not know what you want to write down. And so, uh, especially for me, looking back at some of my earlier notes, 
it is bizarre to look at my daily note and see what I decided to write down. And I can sort of th think back and remember what I was thinking when I wrote it down. But the things that I wrote down when I first got started are wildly different than what I'm writing down or the notes that I'm taking today. And so I would say it's easy when you first get started to just write down everything. Uh, I encourage you to not feel pressure to write down everything, but to definitely be liberal in terms of what you are writing down. So write down a lot of things. And then over time, you will kind of hone in. And if you're kind of veering on the side of writing things down, you will eventually, after several weeks or months or whatever, kind of get into the groove of what you find useful, what you end up writing down, and you will fall into a habit that works for you. So I would say don't think about it too hard. Don't stress yourself out, but just kind of lean into writing more down in the beginning, and then you'll just fall into your own habit and figure out what works for you. Habit is how you keep up with a system once excitement has died down. If you're new to note-taking, it's likely that you are very excited. You are watching a lot of videos like this, you are organizing your system, you're taking lots of notes, you're really feeling that energy. And that is great. You need to be able to recognize that and harness that when you are feeling that excitement and that energy. But that energy and that excitement does not last forever. Trust me, especially after years of keeping up with the system, you no longer have that beginner's excitement. And so the way to continue with a system, whether it is note-taking or anything else, is to develop a habit. A habit could be a daily note. A habit could be every Friday you're reviewing random notes. Whatever it is, a habit could be when you jump into a meeting, you always open a new meeting note and you take some notes on that meeting. Whatever that is, take this time when you are feeling this excitement and start building habits whatever they want whatever they are for you and whatever works for you because once the excitement dies down the habits are going to be the only thing that you have and if you have a daily habit even if it's a, if it's a very small one you're only writing a few words per day in four years three years maybe even earlier you will have this giant library of data without you even realizing that you're doing it so once the excitement dies down of the beginners note taking whatever habit is going to be all you have. So make sure you prioritize figuring out what that means for you. Your system is going to be a mashup of tiny bits from many different people's systems. I think when you're new to note taking and you're kind of just realizing how giant the world is, you might discover a YouTuber that you like, you might discover a book that you like, and you'll think, okay, let me just copy what they're doing. And that's great. And that's a great way to test things out. But I think one of the things that I've learned and that I've seen a lot of people do is their systems that they end up with, say, in a few years, are going to be really a culmination of a bunch of different people's ideas. So I would say if you're new to this, put less pressure on finding somebody that you like and copying their entire system and instead find somebody that you like and copy an individual piece or take a plugin or take one habit, whatever it is, take little bits because eventually the system that you're going to have is going to be a little bit from this book and a little bit from this person and a little bit from this habit that you figured out. And it's going to be a combination of a bunch of things. And if you're putting pressure on yourself to copy somebody else's system or even somebody else's morning routine or evening routine or whatever it is, I think you're really setting yourself up to fail. So really, instead of looking for mentors or people that you can copy, instead, think about why they are doing a certain thing and what that individual habit is. And if that resonates with you, take that one piece and then continue looking or continue searching for, for people and habits and, and different things like that. Because what you will find is in the next year or two, the things that stick for you are going to be a mashup of so many different people's things. And, and that's going to be your own personal productivity style. There are two ways to discover plugins. Browsing random plugins looking for inspiration or wanting a certain functionality and looking for a solution. Prioritize the latter. You can spend a lot of time 
watching YouTube videos of people going over 50 different plugins or browsing different articles that talk about plugins or, or trying out a million different plugins just to see what you like. This is fun. You can have fun with this. I definitely encourage it. But when you're doing that, really what you're doing is looking for inspiration. So you're not starting from a place of how you work. You're starting from a place of what is somebody else doing that I might want to start doing that I'm not doing now. By contrast, the other way to discover plugins is to actually be using your note-taking system. Think to yourself, I wish that it could do blank and then trying to find a solution for blank. I would encourage you as much as possible, just start using your note-taking system, see what the gaps are, and then see if there's a solution to fill that in. That is not to say that there isn't space for discovery of new functionality. Like for me, certainly every time uh, or certain times I'm in the need for inspiration or I'm like, oh, I wonder how this person is working and I'll see kind of what their vault looks like or what plugins they're using. But in general, there are the two ways to discover plugins. Either you're looking for a solution for something you're already doing or you're just hunting for random inspiration. And I would say trying to find a solution for what you want to be doing is the superior way, even though they, they both improve. And so just keep in mind that there are those two differences and know which one you are doing as you're spending time looking for plugins. Write first, organize later. When you're taking notes, just take the notes. Don't worry about the bi-directional links. Don't worry about tagging. If you don't have a perfect template set up, don't take time immediately to set up that template while you're in that meeting, while you have that idea, whatever it is. Make sure that you're taking the notes because once you're done getting that idea on paper, that's when it's best to go back and do that organization and add those tags and add those bi-directional links and do all that cleanup. So definitely write first and then clean up, organize, move around later. You need to create a system you can trust for it to actually work. When I say a system that you can trust, I mean that the data that you expect to be there will be there. And so it'll take a little bit of time to get to this point, but you need to have a note-taking system that if you expect data to be there, it will be there. Sometimes that might mean at the beginning migrating data in there, but you want to have this single source of truth or you want to have a system where like if you are searching for something, you know it is in this folder, you know that you can use this search term, you know whatever it is. Build a system that you can trust. Your future self needs to trust in order for it to be a valuable system. Because the first time you're looking for something and it's not there and it's in this other place, you can no longer trust your system and you are going to use it less. So build a system that you can trust if you want to actually be able to have something that you can use long-term. Outsource decision-making around tools and processes. One of the biggest shortcuts I have is finding people, they whether they are YouTube creators, mentors, authors, whatever it is, and using their expertise to shortcut whatever you're doing. And I would, so if you just copy these people that are much more experienced, a little further along in their journey, you're gonna get the benefits of all of their experience without doing any of the work. And I feel like this applies a lot to applications, this applies a lot to plugins, whatever it is. So if you find somebody that you like and they're using a certain tool, whether that's Obsidian, whether that's Notion, whether that's Evernote, whatever it is, you can save yourself a lot of time testing out Obsidian and then testing out Notion and then testing out Evernote by just copying what they're doing. If they're using Obsidian, use Obsidian and then just not thinking about that anymore and not spending your time doing that. Doing the same for plugins. So finding somebody that does something a certain way and then just copy them and then just don't think about it anymore. That is an excellent way not to just waste your time spending all of your time working on different tools or different plugins or, or testing everything out yourself. Kind of offload that thinking to someone else and you can save yourself a ton, ton of time. Write notes to your future self. If you're new to note taking, keep in mind who you are writing all of these notes for. And you are writing these notes for your future self. Whoever that is, a day later, a week later, a month later, years later, that person is going to be you. So make sure you are writing those notes to yourself. 
And maybe yourself in a year is not going to remember the context of what you're writing, is not going to remember specific instructions or anything. So make sure you are providing that information because the only person you're writing to is your future self. And the other thing, when you are tagging things, when you are labeling things, think of tags and labels in terms of what you might be searching for in the future to find this bit of information, right? So don't necessarily give it a category or a tag. Instead, make sure you're thinking in terms of what a future you will be thinking about to want to find this bit of information. It's a subtle shift, but I think that changing that and giving it that shift will help you so much in your future when it comes time to recalling notes and finding information that you want to find. And that brings us to the end of this video. This is 10 more tips to help you in your note-taking journeys. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you found at least a few pieces that you can pull from this. If you've liked this, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, all those youtube -y things that people always say, and I will see you or you will see me in the next video. Have a great one.